Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Seal, a fellowship trained spine surgeon. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about lumbar synovial facet cysts. First, to understand what that is, you have to understand what the lumbar facet is. If you remember from my anatomy video, this is your low back, there's the back of your spine, there's the front of the spine. The spine is composed of bones, and in between the bones and the front of the spine, there are discs, which are the cushion between the bones, those are the shock absorbers. In the back of the spine, you don't have discs, but you have a little joint that connects each of the bones in the back. And as you flex forward and backwards, this little joint opens up and closes down. Just like any joint in your body, your knee, your hip, your wrist, etc., these joints are mobile joints with cartilage and fluid inside that allow the bones to move. The lumbar spine is no different. So let's go over what all joints look like so every joint has a joint capsule. This is the hard fibrous area that holds the joints together. You don't see the capsule here, and here the facet joint looks sloppy, but in reality, there's a fairly thick capsule that surrounds the facet joint. So next there's cartilage. Cartilage is what covers the bone and it allows it to have a slick Teflon-like surface so when the joint moves, it glides easily. And then you have the synovial membrane. The synovial membrane is a little lining inside the capsule, and the function of the synovial membrane is to make synovial fluid. I've made a model here of what the synovial membrane might look like. So here you see the facet joint, and there I've put a little membrane inside that's a cushion that's made synovial fluid inside that cushions the bone together. And of course, there's a joint cavity which contains the synovial fluid. The synovial fluid is kind of oily, mineral oily, uh, really thick substance that allows the bone to move smoothly along the cartilage. So what can happen with every joint, including the facet joint in your back, just like your knee, just like your hip, you can develop arthritis. So arthritis by definition is the loss of cartilage over time and with age. As you lose cartilage, the body does not regenerate the cartilage, but what can happen is the synovium starts to try to produce more synovial fluid because the joint is abnormal. The other thing that can happen is, if you see my videos on lumbar spondylolisthesis, spondylolisthesis is when there's abnormal motion of one bone on another. So in this case, this bone is sliding in front of that bone. That's the L4 bone, that's the L5 bone. I've done this because L4, L5 is the most common level of spondylolisthesis or instability. And here you'll see that as the bone moves in front of another, the facet joint in the back starts to become abnormal because the biomechanics of the joint become abnormal in the back as the front starts to slip. It's all connected as one piece. So what can happen if there's arthritis and there's more synovial fluid made or there's spondylolisthesis and there's abnormal motion, that capsule can stretch, there's more synovial fluid that's made. And what ends up happening is the synovial membrane out pouches and it forms this fluid filled cyst. Now the fluid is synovial fluid and that cyst comes outside of the joint now, and it's usually encapsulated by a little cyst covering. How do you image a facet joint? You can't really use x-ray because x-rays, while they show the bone, they don't show the soft tissue or fluid. So we typically use MRIs, and here's a classic MRI of a synovial facet cyst. Here you'll see the front of the spine, there's the back of the spine, and this round structure here that's encapsulated in black is the cyst that is inside the spinal canal, the middle portion of this uh, MRI is a spinal canal. And here's another good example of what a cyst looks like. So there's the front of the spine, there's the back of the spine. These little gray strands are the nerves that are swimming in fluid. And as the nerves swim by, you can now see that there's a cyst that's in the way, and this is the outpouching coming off of the facet. So what happens if there's a cyst in the lumbar spine that's now outpouching into the spinal canal with this fluid-filled structure? And just to remind you of the anatomy again, there's the lumbar spine in the back where these yellow things are or where the nerves are. And those nerves run through the back and they go down through the buttock and the leg. Now, if there's a cyst, which I've simulated here, you'll see that there's the facet joint, there's the cyst, and that cyst now has gone into the spinal canal and you see the cyst pushing on these yellow things, which are the nerves. So now you have a fluid filled structure coming off of the facet that's hitting the nerve. If there's a cyst pushing on the nerve, that leads to stenosis. Stenosis, as you know from my other videos, just is a very fancy word for narrowing. Anything can be stenotic. A hallway can be stenotic. A highway can be stenotic because of traffic. But it's stenosis, which is narrowing. Now, what happens if there's narrowing? In this situation, it's narrow because there's a cyst pushing on the nerves. And, of course, the nerves go through the buttock down the leg, and it causes sciatica. 
So the most common presentation of a synovial cyst cyst is at L4, L5. Over 70% of synovial cysts are at L4, L5 because there's the most motion at L4, L5. Hence, that's why we see spondylolisthesis mostly at L4, L5. But compression at the L4, L5 level cause pain in the L5 nerve distribution. The L5 nerve is part of the sciatic nerve and every nerve does something different in terms of sensation, number one. And number two, it also supplies strength to the muscle because the nerve gives electrical activity to the muscle. So here you'll see the L5 nerve and we've traced it out. It goes from the back through the buttock down the outside of the leg. It goes down past the knee to the front of the foot, sometimes to the big toe. Um, and if you have a cyst at the L5 S1 level, you could have pain in the S1 nerve distribution as you'll see in this uh, pink area here. The other thing that it could cause is weakness. When there's very severe compression on the nerve, the nerve can't supply the muscle, the muscle becomes weak. The muscle that the L5 nerve supplies is the muscle that allows you to bring your ankle upwards and your big toe upwards. So there's a couple of ways to test that. The really easy way to see if you have weakness from L5 nerve compression is by walking on your heels. If you can walk on your heels and keep your big toe up and your ankle up, without dropping it and you don't have a foot drop, then your L5 nerve is probably okay. The other way to test it is if you plant your heel on the floor and I tell you to bring your big toe and your ankle up and then we push on it, if I can't push that ankle or big toe down, it probably means that you have good strength in the L5 nerve. So facetis are not a dangerous thing. They don't have to be treated surgically or non-surgically if you don't have pain, but if you are having pain from it, you are having sciatica from it, there's tons of things we can do. In the next episode, we'll talk about the non-operative treatments for synovial facet cysts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and let me know what videos you would like to see in the future.